Hi everyone, welcome to our next Mesh Mixer tutorial. Today I want to talk about all the essentials that, in my opinion, anyone out there should be able to do because it offers so many possibilities for you. Um, so you can do lots of more stuff. And let's just dive right in. So possibly what you will find online are just completed models. And now if you want to change something here, the first thing we have to do is separate them. So this is currently one object. And if we press T, we can transform it, move it around. Um, but we cannot really change anything here for the model. So the first thing we want to do is we want to split this model. And the models can be either one big mesh or multiple meshes. So let's just hope that we have multiple meshes because that makes it much, much easier. So I pressed S to select something and just selected some of the meshes here. And then I press E to expand the selection. And you see, we are lucky um, because the helmet here is not connected to the body. And with Y, we can now separate it. And we have two different objects now. And pressing T once again, we can now move this head around. So we could do something like Rotate the head over here. And yeah. So this is the first and the easiest option if the model is separated. Let's just split it up and use the parts. Let's check for the weapon. Okay, we have here an arm and this. Let's just do it separately. So we have now right arm, left arm. We can now either move one arm or select both and still with T we can move both of them and place them here once again. What we also can do is if we select both of them and go to edit we can combine them so it's again one model uh, but the models are still separated so if I select something here it still stays on one arm. So the keys we already know now are S to select, E to expand the selection and Y to separate and T to transform something. Um, let's just look on my list what else I wanted to do. Okay, so this is now the lucky case. But what happens if we don't have this case? If it's just one big mesh? Um, yeah, that's of course more difficult now. But we can still do that. So for example, let's look for a good spot. Let's say we want to separate torso and legs now. Let's just hide everything else. If we want to separate these two models, we could now either do plain cut uh, like this and then select here slice, keep both. Um, you don't see anything yet, but if I now expand my selection, you see we have the lower half, we have the upper half, and can move that individually. That's like the m easiest way, but you see it's not perfect here. So let's just cancel that. Um, the next thing we could do is we select what we want to split. And if you now select it like this, you see we select too much but here we can set an angle and you see it will only expand the selection so that to the maximum of this angle and this is really great because we have a sharp angle down here um, this means we can just now select anything we want and the selection will automatically stop uh, the problem is now we have lots of these corners here what we can do with the arrow keys, so next to the shift, if we press shift and arrow keys, we will expand the selection by one mesh element. If we click it without shift, it will go, uh, it will decrease the selection. So I usually increase the selection a bit and then decrease it until we're really perfect at the edge. And now we can just do Y, separate it. And then let's separate the legs now. And these two objects we can again combine and also you see the blue line here through the close cracks. And now we have them separated 
exactly where we want them. Since we now really cut the mesh apart, um, we need to fix these uh, open holes. And therefore we have analysis inspector and you see it's uh, just a blue sphere here. We could either do auto repair all or just click on that here. And this will now just close the hole as good as possible. Um, take some time now. And you see it doesn't really know how it should be closed, but it does its best. And now we could uh, jump in the next topic. That's really good. The sculpting tools. So you can actually really do 3D sculpting also in Mesh Mixer. It's of course not as good as in Blender or any other, but you can do stuff like inflate. So make it like really thick here. Um, you can just drag the mesh somewhere around here. Um, you can flatten something. And the tools I use most are Bubble Smooth and Shrink Smooth. So Bubble Smooth will take your blue shape and try to fit it to a sphere um, and basically expand it to a sphere. And Shrink will just do the opposite. So if you have a corner here, Shrink, um, no. shrink Smooth will just see make it go away and bubble smooth will basically make a really big bubble here and what now would fit us best is the shrink smooth um, i will now disable the refinement because refinement means as soon as i do something here it will uh, change the mesh and i don't really want that now so we can select how strong and how big and let's just try it and you see we have these small borders here. We can make it a bit smaller and just go over them. You see it's already much, much better. Let's just go once all around here, everything. Yeah, we can also like try to remove these uh, big ones. Let's go really strong here. And the longer you stay on, on some place, uh, the more this um, tool will be used. And you see it gets already better. Um, yeah, so this is a very, very short introduction to sculpting in Mesh Mixer, but this is the tool I usually move, use. I split something apart or I put something together and then I just use this modifier to um, yeah, fix all these small little problems here. Um, the next thing, if we now, for example, want to change the pose of the legs, um, of course we could now cut it apart. Um, let's, let's just do that. We can cut it here apart as we just did. You see here uh, the angle does not work that good. So let's try to do it manually. Separate it. Separ uh, let's separate that up there and take These three meshes, combine them, close the cracks. We can now move that like here, like this. And you see now our mesh is a bit open. That's not that good, but we can fix that. Uh, we can just again go to select, make it a bit smaller, like this. And now control B, that didn't work. Decrease the angle here, control B, and we just bridge it here. Because if you do the analysis inspector, it will now just close every of those holes and not connect them. But now we have just one big hole and I would usually suggest to try to at least bridge it on four sides. So like here, uh, let's see. He doesn't really like that contour, so let's make it a bit smaller. Again, control B and done. And then we can try do the inspector here. You see we have now three holes. We can try to fix them. Yeah, it looks quite good. And we can just 
to auto repair all and everything's fixed. So um, now we want to go over here to sculpt uh, and fix all those not so nice spikes here and you see the fixing here didn't make it that smooth so let's go with more strength here uh, so here and here we probably have to repair a bit yeah, see we have a strange hole here can now try to either fix it or what we could also do is just select a rather small part make it big 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 and then go back to small and uh, you see we still have something on the inside so let's just go there expand the selection and remove it open our inspector auto repair all and it's fixed so again what we did now after the bridging was just using our shrink smooth brush and then if we have some strange things we can just select them remove them completely and then fix it once again with the analysis so this is one option to do that um, the other option we have is the soft transform so let's just select so you see you can also pull a border instead of marking the mesh and now instead of clicking t we do shift and t and this is our soft transform tool and you see we can now move it here and and it will do a soft transition here between we can also change how big the transition should be now this is too small so like this and there you see how it's yeah it works really smooth and it's basically really easy now to uh, post the legs here so that's the soft transform we could also do the transform but doing the transform just basically fills uh, the gap now with a single mesh and this doesn't look as good so let's rather do the soft transform so shift t instead of t and then we can just make it a bit bigger here and move it around here like this for example doesn't look too bad right it's a bit stretched here so you could think about cutting out first the knee only transforming and bending the uh, leg and then adding the knee once again so it's open to you um, so now we have our model okay that's, it's a weird pose but um, this is for educational purpose only um, if we want to print that now you see we still have some problems here we didn't fix and sometimes meshes you download are really messed up so what i would usually suggest when combining everything did we miss something here okay sometimes these empty meshes appear uh, it's a bucket mesh mixer. So the last thing I want to talk to about uh, now is make solid option because this will just take everything and fuse it into one solid mesh. As soon as you do that, um, everything you separated will be combined once again. And of course, the quality will decrease. Um, but the quality depends on the cell size here. So if we go down to like 100 micrometer, um, of course it takes much much longer but the quality already is much better I usually take 50 micrometers because that's the resolution of my resin printer this takes a bit um, but then you should be quite fine with it um, another thing you can do if you change to accurate here you can also add a small offset so if you have very very small structures like this for example we could say um, let's just add an offset of 0 0.1 millimeter it's not that bad possibly for, M for fdm printing quite fine let's just see how big this now will get so it gets a bit thicker you see the face doesn't look as good now as before but 
and this offset will usually ensure if you have small gaps somewhere that might be separated during printing uh, this offset will fix it and by making everything a bit thicker it's much better to print in FDM and that's it basically that's in my opinion what everyone should be able to do in mesh mixer so it's a 15 minute video now um, it's not that hard to learn so I would really encourage everyone to uh, know this to be able to do this um, it's not like you have to do days of blender tutorials it's just a 15 minute video now to watch and with that you can do really really much already with models you can also separate them like separate the head export the head uh, export is by the way control and e and then load in the head from another model or just download another head and then place it exactly there uh, here uh, in the transform you can also scale so like make it smaller or make it bigger you can also like pull here in one of the directions um, and go back to one so yeah you could create any model you want um, if you find the correct bits you need that's it for today uh, thanks for watching and i hope you have lots of fun with mesh mixer now and you can create so many more uh, 3d models from the existing ones of course if you want to use my customizer this makes uh, this kit bashing again a step easier than this so really really easy just clicking around don't have to do anything here but of course in the customizer you can only use the libraries that are available and already prepared yeah that's it thanks for watching and until next time goodbye